Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today we're going to talk about why I don't use desktop Linux. So let me start off by saying Linux is amazing. Uh, I've been using Linux for about 12 years now. My first installation was Ubuntu 12.04. It was on a Core 2 Duo machine with 4 gigs of RAM. That thing was a screamer. But my point is, I've had over a decade of experience using Linux, and I want to share my thoughts. So let's talk about why I love desktop Linux. Uh, so first of all, open source software is the ethical choice. What I mean by that is that the idea that a piece of software can be available for anybody across the world at no charge, and it's going to work well and do what they need to do, that's amazing, and it's one of the reasons why I donate to many open source projects. I think that it is the right thing to do when it comes to picking an ethical piece of software. And of course, one of the best things about Linux is there's no spyware. It doesn't spy on you, which obviously Windows and to a lesser extent Mac OS, they both have a pretty decent amount of telemetry, Telemetry is just a fancy word for information we're collecting about you. And Linux is the only desktop operating system family that doesn't have issues with privacy invasion. Also, desktop Linux is relatively secure compared to something like Windows where there's a new major exploit every month or so. Desktop Linux has a smaller number of CVEs and those CVEs it does have are lower in severity compared to Windows. And also, desktop Linux gives you so much choice. With everything from the distribution you choose, to the package manager you use, all the way to the desktop interface that you experience and work with, you have infinite choice in all of these areas which is a, a great thing. And also, Linux is just simple in the way that it operates. What I mean is that it's a very logical system. There's a per pervasive logic that is incorporated throughout the entire system, and it's just very coherent and simple to work with. And also, you have some great options for the user interface. My personal favorite is going to be GNOME, but there's also the likes of KDE, Cinnamon, and then for something a little more exotic, you've got Sway and i3, and Hyperland even, which are all amazing options that offer something unique that you just can't get on Windows or Mac OS. I know that I've said that I absolutely love desktop Linux, and I think that it's a great choice for the vast majority of people at home, but I can't use it personally. So why is that? Well, first of all, desktop Linux is very easy to break. And basically, so here's the scenario. You need a piece of software, but that software isn't available in the default repos. So you go out and you add a third-party repo, or you add a new package manager, and you use that to install that software you need. Well, here's the problem. Once you add a third-party repo or some new package manager, your system's going to break. It might not break right away. It may not break in an obvious way, but it is going to break in some new and exciting way. Every desktop Linux installation I've had has eaten itself and broken in some new and creative way. And I know, I know, it's a skill issue, right? I'll, I'll acknowledge it's a skill issue, but the fact of the matter is that you're going to have to add third-party repos to get the software that you need to get work done. And when you do that, your system's going to break, and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to fix it, or even just reinstalling from scratch. So that's reason number one why I don't use desktop Linux, because in order for it to do the things that I need it to do, it just ends up eating itself. Now, immutable distributions resolve this issue somewhat. Immutable desktops are basically unbreakable. And that comes with a lot of benefits, and also some drawbacks. For what I need to do personally, 
immutable distros don't work well for it. And speaking of package managers, there's just too many package managers. I mean, you've got apt, dnf, yum, yay, pacman, fucking uh, flat pack, snap, and you've got all these package managers. And the problem is, there's no single pass, there's no single package manager that has all the software that you need. You know, you always end up in a lot of distros come with two of them out of the box, even like with Ubuntu, you've got apt and snap by default, and the problem is. There's no single package manager that has everything that you need. So you always end up installing a second one if your distro doesn't already come with two. And it's just needless complication. And also, some of the most popular sources of software are just not very secure. Like, let's look at Snaps. About a year ago, Canonical had an issue with their Snap App Store where people were downloading crypto crypto jacking software. It was software that would pretend to be crypto currency wallets, and then it would just steal all your crypto. And obviously Canonical's done something about that. They've started doing a manual review process, so every piece of software that gets uploaded to the Snap Store, they're manually looking at it. I don't see how that's sustainable, because they're not making any money off the Snap App Store. So who's paying for people to do this? And it's just not something that I see being sustainable in the long run. And the thing about Snaps and FlatHub is that the people who are making the software available on those platforms, usually it's not the same person who made the software in the first place. The developers of software are not uploading them to the FlatHub store or to the Snap Store. It's third-party people who have nothing to do with the project usually, just packaging it and uploading it for use on those different uh, package managers. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Package availability is very important. But the, the root issue is you can't trust these random people who are uploading the packages. We've seen in the recent past Again, on the Snap Store, but also on FlatHub, people uploading malicious packages that just go in and ruin your system or steal your money. So FlatHub and Snap, the two most popular ways to get software, are just not secure enough. And also, let's talk about getting software. There's a lot of software that I need to do my work that just isn't available on Linux. And yes, there are, there are alternatives. So like you have Inkscape and GIMP instead of Photoshop. But the problem is I need to collaborate with multiple people. And those multiple people are going to be using the industry standard stuff, Microsoft Office and the Adobe Suite. So those are the tools that I need to use to collaborate with those people. You know, if I start using some alternative software that they aren't using, then we're going to run into a whole bunch of compatibility problems, and it's just going to prevent me from being able to realistically collaborate with other people. Now, if you're just a home user, and all you need is something to check your email, something to browse the web, then yeah, Linux is going to work really well for you. But if you're using it in a professional setting, and you're needing to collaborate with other people, well, desktop Linux probably isn't going to work so well unless everyone else that you're working with also uses Linux. So those are the reasons why I don't use Linux on the desktop, but I do use Linux quite heavily on the server. So Linux is the best operating system for servers, hands down. All of my servers are running on Linux. Uh, nothing beats it. And it has all the software that I need to run a server. It's super hard to break on the server side. You know, it's very set it and forget it. I've never had a Linux server eat itself. And it's simple. Like, the, the Linux paradigm on the server side is just so straightforward and easy to work with. And again, like I said earlier, Linux is just logical in the way it operates. So I do use Linux every day, 
every day I'm interacting with Linux servers that I have hosted here in my home lab or in the cloud, and I think that Linux is the best choice for a server operating system. And I use it quite heavily. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, it's just that Linux desktops, they just aren't usable for me. Between being extremely easy to break, not having the software I need, and being just generally difficult to do some things, it's just not a good combination. But again, if you're just the average person at home who needs to browse the web, watch YouTube, and check your email, Linux works really well for all of that, and I think that you should give it a shot. If you're considering using Linux, don't let this video stop you from exploring it. I think that everybody should give it a shot, because for the majority of people, it's going to work really well. It's just that I'm not one of those people. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Patrick. If you enjoy cybersecurity content or listening to people rant about Linux, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And of course, if you liked this video, leave me a like. It really means a lot to me and helps out the channel. I don't take sponsors and I don't monetize anything. Uh, this channel exists solely for the subs and likes. So if you enjoy my content, it would mean a lot to me if you could leave one of those buttons down below in the clicked state. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.